Hey baddies, welcome to another Auntie Amy's Trashy Tarot. Today I'm doing a pick a card all about why do people gossip about you. So this should be a super interesting reading. I will be pulling as I go today and your picks for today are going to be these three cards. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a little video for those of you guys who need a bit more time to see which group you're drawn to. If you're drawn to more than one group, there may be more than one message here for you. And with that said, I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies on the other side. Bye, guys. I'm changing who I am. I'm making a new plan. Rearranging my life and I won't look back ever up. Hey group one, all of you that selected the mouth, this is going to be your reading all about why do people gossip about you. So keep in mind this is a general reading, it's a general session, so just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. Alrighty, so let's get into it. Let's get some a few cards here all about why do people gossip about my group one why do people gossip about my group one tell me about it hmm why do people gossip about my group one it's like that one wants to come out this is this one i feel this one okay we have exploring 33 far off lands are awaiting 33 is a master number Let's get a couple more of these. Tell me more about why people gossip about my group one. Why do people gossip about my group one? I feel like you could be a Sagittarius or have an important placement of Jupiter in your chart. We have blessings, prayers heard. We have time to use, not to lose. Okay. I feel like you don't waste time. You're not a time waster. And probably there are times that you come off a little blunt to people um, because you try to make the most of your time you you don't you don't you're not for petty nonsense I'm hearing like I'm not for petty nonsense um, and it makes people misunderstand you a lot um, it makes people take some of the things you say uh, to heart um, I feel like a lot of people around you may feel like very sensitive um i feel like you're a straight shooter there's also an era an era an aura of blessings around you as well we have resilience okay so you're very resilient you you've obviously that card tells me you've been through a lot of shit, um, and that's probably why you don't waste your time um, you know time is precious, and I feel like you don't invest in drama. Uh, you stay away from drama. We have sovereignty, the Morgan. Morgan, <laughs> sorry, my tongue's heavy, y'all. Um, I feel like, and we have the sword. I'm feeling Queen of Swords energy here. So you may be an air sign uh, as well. We may have a Libra. Um, we may have a, I'm feeling heavy Sagittarius energy, but that's not an air sign. That's a fire sign. Um, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini here. Um, and I'm just feeling like there is a sense of self-empowerment here. There's a sense of like, you know who the fuck you are um, and you don't apologize for it. And I, I feel like you don't mince words. And unfortunately, in this world, when we don't mince words, a lot of times we're misunderstood. And I feel that here. Um, I'm feeling the bottom card. Uh, we have um, Guardian. I think at times you appear to other people as you're very guarded, uh, which creates the air of mystery, which honey, are you a Scorpio, <laughs> which creates um, kind of uh, this air of people naturally talking about you because they don't really know you. They don't really know what you're about. They don't really know your story. So there's a lot of guessing that goes on um, around you. Uh, we have illumination. And I feel like it's because you know who you are. Uh, the sovereignty is very strong. I think you're the kind of person that you really 
You're not afraid to speak up for yourself. We have Sagittarius in the bottom of this deck, so I'm going to take that card. <laughs> it feels right. Um, let's pull a few from my channel. Ooh, these kind of just fell out. We have Bonded Connection Family. I feel like the people um, in your life uh, who feel close to you, I, I feel like they feel really special, um, and they do talk about you. Um, I think they talk about what an overcomer you are, um, and I feel like they know they're, they're very, um, we have delightful personality. I feel it funny. I feel like you save this for people in your circle. Like you save your special stuff, your special sauce, if you will. That's what I'm getting. You save your special sauce. Sorry, I have to break from my OCD. Okay. <laughs> you save your special personality for the people in your life who have formed these close attachments to you. And I feel like there are people who try to break into this, like, I don't want to call it a clique, but it's like a coven. It's like a special group. It's like, a, uh, um, I, I'm seeing, what I, you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing like a cave with a bunch of wolves in it, okay? That's what it feels like here. Like, they want to get into the wolf cave, but they can't because they're not a wolf, right? They ain't a wolf, and they don't belong. And it's it's just the way it is. You know, it's not personal. Well, it is personal, isn't it? It really is because they just, they aren't your kind. And that's okay. You know, I feel like you're not for everybody. Um, and that, sometimes that brutal bluntness, brutal bluntness, that's a tongue twister for me right now, um, really serves you. It, it serves you well. Um, it keeps a lot of people away from you, but it also makes those tongues wag, doesn't it? Tell me more about this. Okay, we have costume pretending. Okay, so I feel like people talk about like, that you're, you're not real, that like you're fake, like you're a put on, like you can't be real. You can't be who you are. We have dark entity karmic. I feel like you attract a lot of karmic people to you because you're so mysterious. Um, and you have tongues wagging about you. People like to talk about you because they don't know what's going on behind closed doors. They can't even get close to the cave of wolves, the den of wolves. That's what it is, the den of wolves. Um, and I feel like your, your, your demeanor at times, your ability to guard yourself, really, really, it kind of scares these people away, these karmic people away. But what they do is they go around talking about like how fake you are, you're not that tough, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's where the gossip comes in. We have, ooh, yeah. There are people who, like they're very attracted to you. It's this air of mystery that you have. Very mysterious. They do not know what's going on because it seems like you're very blessed. And see, around her head here, there's like this aura, it feels like. There's this aura. And there, there's wings here. There's a lot of air energy with you. Um, and it feels like people just can't put their finger on you. And a lot of times when you have someone who people just mysterious and they can't put their finger on you, then they want to attach a label, like lick a stamp. We're just going to put labels on you until you tell us, until we make you mad enough for you to tell us who the fuck you are, because we don't know. We don't know. Um, and I feel like, honestly, you don't care. So you're not invested in that shit, so you don't care. Uh, label me. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to let you in. My wolves den. No, no way, no how kind of thing. We have Halloween, celebration, special occasion, reunion. I, I'm feeling the reunion energy here. I feel like people from your past... They, they still talk about you. I don't think you realize what an impression you leave. I feel like you can be very intimidating. And your energy is almost like, for some people, it's like an aphrodisiac. There's an element here that's very sexy, musky. I don't get that word very often. And I don't mean it like, ooh, you smell. But like, there's something about your aura that's very like alluring and like sensual to people. Um, and I don't think you do this on purpose. I think it's just the way you are. Uh, we have bugaboo, clinging, irritating, blowing up your phone. And I feel like this, when people do this to you, when people like really try to attach to your energy, I think it brings out this. You're just like, I'm not the one. That's not how you get into the wolf's den. 
That's not how you get to know me. That's not how I'll let you in. If you really are a wolf, you got to know that you got to show me that you're a wolf. You got to be patient. You, you got to take time. I'll let you in, but, but we got we to gotta figure out the balance here. We got to figure out, are you really a wolf kind of thing? Tell me more about my group one. We're going to pull some tarot now. Tell me more about my group one. I think this, this card right here, it tells me that there's a lot of people who are physically attracted to you. And it could be for a lot of you, it's just this part of your personality. Like you just, <laughs> it's almost like people want what they can't have. People want what they don't know. It's like they want to unwrap you like a present, uh, to a degree here, we have the Knight of Wands, <laughs> the Six of Coins, and the Two of Coins. Okay, look how goofy this Knight of Wands is. Like, you make me go gaga. <laughs> this is friend or somebody hitting on you or romantic people. I think people just are like, they love being around you, especially this group of people. Like, they enjoy you. You have a great personality. And I feel like a lot of you hide it behind this, like, mysterious guardian energy of, like, you've got to pay the toll to get in to see the show, motherfucker. I'm just not going to be this just for anyone. Because you have been through some shit and you've had to filter people out of your life. And you're like, I don't want to do that shit again. I, I don't want to have to, like, go no contact with people. I, I don't want to have to worm out, worm out? <laughs> I don't want to have to weed out, you know, the negative Nellies. I don't I don't want to have to weed out the leeches. I don't I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm just going to focus on keeping those bitches out of my life. Meantime, you got people going gaga over your energy and they talk about you. They talk about like I'm seeing a group of people talking about how how like I feel like I feel like people who are interested in you, who you have no idea, because I feel like sometimes, like sometimes you guys are just clueless about how attractive you are or how you attract people. And you have people talking about like how hot you are and like, how, how can I get their attention? How do I get this person's attention? Because you may be an air sign because air signs are like this. Um, and the truth is, is that it's very, very difficult to get your attention. It, it's, it takes a very special person, a wolf, a fellow wolf, uh, familiar with the uh, politics of getting into the den uh, to get your attention. So we have the six of coins here. You are so very grounded when you let people in, you are so there for your people. I think that's why you're so hard to know because you know that when you're down for somebody, you're down. Like you, if they show up on your doorstep, like with a body and say, don't ask me questions, you're like, okay. And you go grab the shovel. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the kind of person you are. You're like mobster down kind of thing. You know, uh, you're like, we're family. Once you let someone in, you their family. So I feel like that's why you're so careful about who you let in. And it makes these bitches crazy because I feel like what you attract and who you let in, they're loyal. Wolves are loyal. You are very, very loyal and you bring loyalty to you. So your people are loyal. So when people kind of try to like sneak around and find out shit about you, they don't find out anything because people don't, your people don't tell people things about you. They don't share information because they know how hard it was to get in, to get into that den. And they don't want to lose their spot because they like the funny show. They, they like knowing your personality. They like being in the den. So they're not going to say shit. <laughs> and they're not going to say shit. We have the two of coins here. And I feel like you being this way has really brought you a lot of balance and a lot of blessings. I think you've learned that for you, this is a good thing um, as far as like how you run your personal 
relationships. And I feel like some of you guys, this may be how you run like your personal life, but in your like career life, you may be very, very gregarious at work. You may be very lively. You may have to be very open and have a lot of contacts. But when it comes to your personal life, you're like, this shit is private and special. And I'm seeing like a huge, like white gate and it's locked and you have to press the button and ask and say the secret password and have the decoder ring to get in and it drives the gossiping hens crazy especially at work i'm getting with all these pinnacles a lot of you guys have people that talk about you at work because you probably don't really um like you socialize to a degree but not like you don't go to a lot of wine mixers if you know what i'm saying <laughs> what it was that that movie uh step brothers the catalina wine mixer you wouldn't probably go to that <laughs> you'd miss a great concert though <laughs> we have the hermit and we have the eight of wands okay so i'm feeling like for you you treasure your alone time. I feel like you have probably been on some kind of hermit, um, hermit journey, uh, some isolation here. A lot of us have been isolated since the thing happened a few years ago, but I feel like for you, you being isolated has empowered you, um, in a way that probably you may not be completely aware of right now, but you're starting to. Okay, um, for a lot of you, there has been deep layers of illumination here. There's been deep layers of growth. And I feel like it's really helped you grow more confident and more, there's more perseverance here. There's more of an ability to overcome. And it's really made the people who talk about you irritated um, because they, it's almost like they see something in you activated. And it's a mirror of what's not activated in them. And it makes them talk about you because deep down they're jealous. Okay. And it's easy to chop this up to jealousy, but when you see somebody growing and you're afraid to grow yourself, it can be very intimidating. And it, you see someone holding their boundaries, turning down offers, turning down friendships, turning down jobs, turning down money because you are committed to being yourself. That is very intimidating. And it takes a lot of ethics and it takes a certain kind of loyalty to the truth of self to do that. And people are going to talk about you, all right? Because you have a special aura that um, really intrigues people. There's something very intriguing about you, group one. So yeah, that's what I received today. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I love to have you as a member of my tribe. And if you'd like to see more Auntie Amy's trashy tarot, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies on the other side. Bye guys. Hey group two, all of you that selected cherries, this is going to be your reading all about why do people gossip about you. So keep in mind this is a general reading, it's a general session, so just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. Alright, so let's get a few cards here for my group two. Why do people gossip about my group two? Why do people gossip about my group two? Tell me spirit, one more, okay. All right. I feel one more shuffle after that knock. All right. Okay. This one kind of wants to come out. So we have masks behind the folding screen. Okay. All right. Why do people talk about my group too? I feel like you have removed some masks here, Cherry. Um, I'm hearing the word alarmed. Uh, it's alarming. I'm alarmed. I'm alarmed. Um, oh, you got four of these. We're going to take them. <laughs> We're going to take all four. Okay. We have transformation becoming me. Yes. I feel this true love. Your love is here to stay. Uh, and we have dark path learning from your mistakes. Um, it feels like people are, people talk about you because you've removed some masks, masks, and you have transformed. Um, 
and you have learned to love yourself. You've owned your past, okay, which I got to tell you, people spend lifetimes learning the skill of owning their past, okay, because a lot of us has done, a lot of us have done a lot of heavy shit in our life, you know, we're not proud of, but you know, there is a wisdom that comes from, you know, having these experiences and understanding that we are human beings doing the best we can in some very bad situations. And often we make choices from very toxic places. We make choices based on very skewed information that comes from, you know, trauma and things like that. And I, I feel like you learn or are learning to forgive yourself or at least have compassion for yourself. Um, and there are people who judge you for this, judge you for giving yourself compassion um, in areas where other people will not give you compassion, okay? Because people, people are bitches, okay? <laughs> Listen to Auntie Amy. People do not have compassion for themselves. Why would they have compassion for you, okay? You are, like I said, it takes lifetimes for people to deal with their own shit, right? Learning how to forgive themselves, learning how to accept their past and live with it. If they can't do that for themselves, when they see you doing that, healing, you know, transforming, removing your mask, it's a very, um, what is the word I want to say? I, I don't want to use the word catalyst because that comes later. But at first, it's very annoying. It is infuriating to some people um, and they want to talk about you. We have rest and we have grief. Yeah, I feel, uh, I feel there are people who are very, like, some people grieve and talk about how you used to be, how it used to be, and they mourn you like you're gone. Maybe you've gone no contact with people, and they talk about that. Um, they talk about what happened. They talk about the falling out. I feel these two cards want to come out. They talk about what happened. They talk about the falling out. They talk about the fight. Whatever, whatever happened here, uh, they are not over it. Okay, they're they're still working in that energy. Uh, we have uh, freedom. Mm, that scares the hell out of people. We have disconnection. Um, this freedom and disconnection. It feels like it's it's from this situation, and these people are talking about you. They talk about you because you're very strong. It takes a lot just to remove a mask, okay? It, it takes a lot to take the mask off and say, this is who the fuck I am, you know? And if you don't like it, fuck off. And literally disconnected. You disconnected from people. And it may be that you may still have contact, but it's not the same. I hear people saying, it's not the same. They're not the same. It'll never be the same. No matter what we do, it'll never be the same. They're not the same person I thought I knew. And it's because you were living in the space of fulfilling other people's fucking expectations of you. And you decided, you know what? And it, it feels like for you guys, when that thing happened around 2020 where we had to all separate, I feel like a lot of you guys just had some realizations about, you know, if, if things are going to go like this, I need to live my life as who I am. Because I don't want to, you know, have anything bad happen and not have lived my life fully as who I am. You know, um, a lot of people came to some really intense realities that realizations of the reality that, you know, I, I need to live authentically in my authentic self or I'm going to miss, miss my life experience. And I feel like, you know, if it wasn't around 2020, there was generally this, this awakening realization that I, I got to live my truth. I got to start loving myself. <laughs> Bad intentions, no contact. I got the no contact there. People who are in no contact with you are definitely talking about you still. Um, I feel like for you, you've been busy moving the fuck on. And they talk about you because a lot of them have no idea how you've managed to do this kind of glow up thing. Okay? Spreading lies. Highly intelligent. But yeah, they're definitely spreading lies probably about what happened here. Um, probably about uh, the fight, the event um, that happened online, Insta, TikTok, Facebook. They're definitely watching you on online platforms. Um, we have people pleaser, user. I feel like these people used you. 
you're probably aware of that. We have tattoos, collaboration. This I feel that collaboration, this is probably someone who, you know, you may have worked with or collaborated on, or there was a bond here. It, it could have been family, it could have been friend, it could have been a coworker, but there was definitely a collaboration of people. Um, and I feel more like, it doesn't feel so much like a work thing, but like, some kind of collaborating energy, like working together. You collaborated. You were, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's not so much as you, you people please. That's what it is. You like went along with it. You went along with what they wanted you to do. And you stopped doing that. And they were like, what? Who, who is this person? And you learned to love yourself and you were like, I'm not doing this anymore. We have isolation over here that is on the bottom of the deck. I'm going to take that too because I'm feeling that isolation. Um, and I feel like some of them either get news of you or they see you online. Maybe, maybe you have a, a platform and they're watching you online. But they're definitely seeing you change. And they're talking about you, uh, especially the people in no contact. Now, if you're online and you have a platform or, or whatever, there are people watching you and talking about you. Um, also in person, like people you know, seeing you change. A lot of people are kind of like, I don't want to use the word starstruck, but impressed with how much you've done on your own. It's almost like as you let go of these people, you were able to see more deeply into your own truth, to see more deeply into yourself um, and to allow more of your honest truth to come forth. And I feel like there was a lot of pain here. There, there was a lot of, of deep issues that you had to face. You know, you had to own your shit, you know, owning your shit was really fucking important and it can take lifetimes to do. Okay, tell me more about this. There are people grieving you as if you are no longer on this earth. Okay, they're grieving you as if you've passed. Um, and the truth is, the person they knew as you doesn't exist anymore. You've changed. You've grown. You're not that person anymore. If they were to come and meet you today, they wouldn't know who you are. You, you are such a different person. Some of you guys look different. Some of you guys, your personality is different. It's like you have emerged as an authentic frequency of yourself. And you are going to continue to do that. Because I feel like you are getting more and more freedom, more and more liberation. Um, you're becoming more and more fearless. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. And there are people who are kind of in awe of your ability to do this. Cause I feel like in many ways you're an underdog. We have the seven of coins here. I feel like people see you investing in yourself. Often, and I, I run into this personally, often your guides will bring you to these situations where you're asked to, um, Choose yourself. Are you going to choose yourself? Especially if you've had people pleaser kind of energy, your guides will ask, give you the kind of a test. I don't want to call it a test, but I will. Um, are you going to choose to please other people or are you going to choose to please yourself? Um, and I find this test comes up often for people who have been people pleasers, uh, people who have gone along, people who have removed masks. It's almost like there are certain steps along the way of this journey of becoming more of your authentic self where we pause, spirit comes forward and gives you this situation and you're again made to pick yourself. And it's almost like when those, those, uh, those paths come up, it's like a crossroads again. And when you choose yourself, a new road opens for you. So it, it's part of your process. We have the Knight of Coins here. Boy, this card's been coming out a lot in this deck. We have the Two of Swords. And I'm feeling, I, 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 read, I, I read intuitively and traditionally, but this Knight, Knight of Coins card, which is the Knight of Pentacles card, is a really interesting card. Because, of course, we have the Knight of, uh, of Pentacles, Knight of Coins here. He's a centaur. Okay, he has these little flies and bugs around him, which I feel like this is the gossip. Um, and then there's coins spilling out. And 
I don't feel loss here as much as overflow. And I feel like these bitches are talking about how there's just so much overflow of your authenticity. Like you, I get this energy of like, why do you have to be so loud about who you are? Like, why do you have to be so bold? Why do you have to, uh, why is your authentic self so big? Like, can't you, it's this energy that wants to shrink you make you smaller. And I feel like for a lot of you, that's been the problem. Um, people want to keep you small. They want you to, to not speak truth. They don't want you to be your fabulous, creative, wonderful, divine self. Um, and as you become more authentically yourself, as you overflow in this beautiful essence of who you are, you're going to have more of this gossipy energy. You know, people are going to talk about you because they don't have the balls to do this. Bottom line, honey, they don't have the guts to be who they really are. It's so much easier to fall into, I'm going to use this term, I don't like it, but I'm going to use it, the NPC role in the world. You know, just be mindless consumer. Don't think for yourself. Do what they tell you. Be a robot. You know, let them take, let, let the powers that be take care of the stuff and just roll with it. That is not you. Okay. I think you tried to do that for everyone else, just to make everybody else happy. And you found out for some of you in a very difficult way, two of swords, that this shit is not working for me. Like I, something for some of you happened that was very traumatic. There was some kind of personal insight. Some of you guys had like a mental crisis or a crisis in a relationship, but you were just shown the mirror of self. And like, if I don't do something, I am, I'm going to leave this earth and never experience my truth of myself in the world. And people are going to see me leave this earth and they're going to think they know me and they don't even know me. So there's this element of you just really being more bold about who you are and people cannot help but talk about you. Okay. They just can't help it. Because it's like, who, who did this fabulous person, who did this fabulous person, who does this fabulous person think they are? And they don't call you fabulous, but I do. Because I know this road. This road is hard. Whatever your authentic truth is, this road is a tough one. Okay. It's, it's not easy. And I tell you, it's not for the weak. And the weak talk about the strong. That's what they do. Because they could never do this. Uh, five of Wands. Okay. Um, and with this five of ones card, like I feel the struggle. I feel it in this card. Um, this little guy right here is carrying this big, this big branch that's got all these little guys on it and they're all just kind of fighting here. It's been a fight. It's, it's been a journey and it still is, isn't it? It, it, you know, we like to say on the journey to authenticity that it gets easier, but it's, it's hard to bring out your authentic self when you've been taught to shrink it and hide it for whatever reasons. It's very difficult um, because you have to get vulnerable with yourself first and then with other people. Now, people who have always been their authentic self because they felt safe enough to do that, they may not understand how difficult this is. But if you were in a situation like as a child or for whatever reasons where you felt you had to hide this part, it takes a tremendous amount of strength to bring this out, okay? And you knew when you begun this that people were going to judge you for who you are, who you really are. That's why you hid yourself. That's why you put on the masks because you know being my true self makes me vulnerable, right? Because you are not like the others. You are not like the others. And it's beautiful. It's awesome. It's wonderful. And of course, people are going to talk about you. You know, they're going to talk about you. We have the Ten of Wands here. This is about oppression, okay? Uh, very oppressive energy. You have been extremely oppressed. Um, and I think people talk about, and you won't like this. I wouldn't like this, but they talk about like how you've been oppressed, like your trauma, your issues. If you've had any addictions, people talk about that. Like they talk about the bad shit. And, you know, people like to talk about that stuff. They like to talk about all the bad stuff people have done and, you know, the stuff you may have done when you weren't your best self. That's the stuff they like to talk about, especially in the no contact situation. They like to talk about what a bitch you were when you were in your toxic behavior. So, you know, 
But this card is also about accomplishment. It's about overcoming. It's like picking up your sticks, picking up your shit, picking up your trash, and, and putting it on your back and saying, yeah, this is mine. I'm owning my shit, and I'm taking it with me. And it's like you overcome it. You take it with you, and you own it. And I feel that here. Um, and this really has been kind of like a theme. I think Group 1 had this as well. Just owning who you are. Um, and I got to tell you, people cannot, can't stand it. And especially this no contact situation. And I got to tell you, some of these people do not like that you're online. If you're online talking or sharing your life online, they don't like it. Some of them have called you a liar about whatever you're sharing online. Okay. Um, and I got to tell you, as far as trauma goes, you know how that goes. Like a lot of you have been traumatized by some of these people and they're calling you a liar behind your back. They're never going to validate you. Okay. They are never, ever going to validate you. So you probably already expect, expected this. Okay. We have quite a few a tarot here. We have the four of swords, the ace of coins, the eight of swords, and the page of coins. And this is what I'm feeling with this eight of swords here. Um, I, I feel like they really never thought that whatever you have overcome, whatever you're doing, they never thought you could do it. They never, ever thought you could overcome the things you have. They never thought that you could become the person you are, especially without them. The fact that you have done this without them, they cannot stop fucking talking about it. And they're trying to figure out like, you know, are you on substances? Do you have a sugar person? Like, what is going on? Like, how are you able to do this? And for most of you, it's just sheer will. It's sheer will and determination. It's sheer will, determination, and finding your truth. Finding the truth of yourself. Uh, a lot of you guys have really been working on your skills and talents. I feel like you guys have really been focused. And what you don't realize is why you've been focusing on your stuff and opening your eyes to getting out of this eight of swords. And a lot of you guys have been really recovering and taking care of yourself. You know, you have these bits who are talking about you and I got to tell you you know you're one of those people who um, ha is transforming so much and changing so much that people are going to talk about you okay they are um, we have the page of coins and we have the ace of coins okay what I'm getting with this is like I'm getting like some of this information they don't like to talk about the good things, okay? And the thing is, is that I feel like there's good news coming for you. There's a lot of good things happening for you, but they don't like to talk about that. They, they don't like that you have a new beginning. They don't like that good things happen for you. Um, if they could throw this ace of coins at you, they would. Like, they, they just don't like it. And you see this little house here and this little, like, it's almost like you have a whole new life and they don't like that. You're not supposed to have a life without them. You're not supposed to be able to get along in the world without them. Um, and I feel with the page of coins, I'm feeling like immaturity here. I feel, um, and I'm reading this intuitively at this point, of course, of course, um, I'm feeling like someone like lost their head like they get completely hot headed over you. They lose their temper over you. Um, anything, anything, anytime, anything good happens. Okay. They just, they, they cannot stand for you to have good things happen. And for some of them, they, they hear about it or they see it online or they hear about it through word of mouth and they talk about it. And for some of them, the person that's telling them about it is gossiping about you. So a lot of you guys need to check, you know, who, who you have in your life. Okay. And I think some of you guys know, but just be careful, you know, who you talk to, especially if they talk to the no contact situation, okay? But people talk about you because you're powerful, because you're changing your life, because you're falling in love with yourself, your real self, not the masks you were forced to wear to make everybody else fucking happy. They talk about you because you're becoming free and liberated um, and fearless and bold. They don't like it. And a lot of them are living in these illusions of you and they're spreading lies to each other. They spread false gossip. Um, and a lot of them think like if you're online and you're sharing your life, they call you a liar about it because the truth about what you experienced is just too dead on true. 
and it causes them to have to look into the mirror of self. And to be honest, I don't care what their age is. They are too spiritually immature to see the truth of self. And so I just want to tell you guys, specifically you guys who are still looking for validation, you're not going to get it. Okay, you're not going to get it anytime soon, maybe down the line, but not anytime soon. And a lot of times the healing journey involves a level of acceptance. And I feel like for some of you, there's a level of acceptance here. Just finding peace with your closure is I'm not going to get closure from them. I'm going to have to provide myself with some form of closure. And I know for me, no closure was closure for me. I I could shut the door on the fact that I'm not going to get closure and that's okay. You know, everyone's different. So that's kind of a little side message for you guys. So, okay, group two, that's what I received for you. I hope this resonated. If it did, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'd love to have you as a member of my tribe. If you'd like to see more Auntie Amy's trashy tarot, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies on the other side. Bye, guys. Hey group three, all of you that selected fire, this is going to be your reading all about why do people gossip about you. Keep in mind, this is a general reading, so just take what resonates and leave the rest behind. All right, so let's get some cards for you. I'm going to get a few cards from this deck. I forgot what this deck is called. (laughs) Anyway, it's one of my favorites, so let's get a few cards here. Why do people gossip about my group three? Why do people gossip about my group three? Why do people gossip? Oh, okay, we'll take all of those. We have shadow. Okay. We have tinfoil hat. (laughs) We have empath. All right, we have self-care. And we have triggered. Okay, you definitely trigger people. You're connected. You're highly connected to spirit. Um, And I got to tell you, um, I feel like you are very connected to your shadow. I feel like you accept your shadow elements. You could have a darker vibe. You could be a little witchy. Um, You could be a little intense. Um, I I think people are just like, I think you're your appearance or your demeanor triggers people. Um, You're definitely psychic, empathic. Uh, You're probably a little bit with this tinfoil hat. I feel like you may be a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, or I feel like you have a lot of occult knowledge or hidden knowledge. Um, And with the shadow here, I'm feeling like you can be intimidating. You may be a shadow worker or very comfortable with your shadow. You may be aligned with like underworld kind of energies or underworld kind of vibes. Okay. Tell me more about my group three. Why do people talk, gossip, talk about my group three? I think you take really good care of yourself. With the self-care, I think you are very attractive. I think you're hot. I think you're beautiful. I think you're handsome. I think you are, a lot of you guys are in a very dark way. Um, Like you have an air about you that's very like witchy or like occult or artistic or sophisticated. Um, And uh, people feel a vibe. You're a vibe. You're a vibe. That's what I'm getting. Like you are a vibe. We have Nyx, darkness. Yes, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. We have vengeance. Ooh, I wish I could remember how to say this, but that that's it right there. Um, we have darkness and we have vengeance. Ooh, people talk about you because you are intimidating as fuck, my friend. Okay, this card right here wants to come out. And we have beauty. Yes, you're very attractive. You may not think so. Okay, we're talking about why other people talk about you, okay? There's a lot of very attractive people that don't find themselves attractive at all um, because they have their own issues here. You also may be an Aquarius, uh, uh, a, ca- a Cancer. I can barely talk, y'all, a Scorpio. <laughs> um, but I feel like because you're so connected to your shadow, I feel like when people fuck you over, like, run, run. I feel like you're very generous Leo energy here, uh, Taurus energy, uh, Libra energy, um, Cancer energy. But once you fuck you over, group three, you are like everyone should run because it's like a 
a arch demon is released. Like you, and you may, you know, you may do magic. Like you may, no, hey, we don't, we don't judge over here. I don't judge people for what they do. So let's get some more cards. Tell me more about my group three. You're very powerful. If you're a witch or you work magic or in the occult or you're a light worker, whatever you are, whatever your label is, I feel like you're very powerful. You're very, very powerful. Okay. We have searching for my grail quest. Yeah. And I feel like you are on, you are aware that you are on a different kind of journey than the average person. Like you are on a different kind of thing. Um, and you are not for everybody. And I think you're okay with that. I'm literally feeling like you're sitting in this tower up here. And it's not that you think you're better than everyone, but you're up here reading books and casting spells and like doing potions and like learning and growing and being your beautiful, badass self, you know. Um, and people are just like, oh, like this person here is like, oh, I want to go up in there. I want to see what they're doing. They're so hot and beautiful and handsome and they're so interesting. Like there's this energy here with group three. You're so interesting. People can't help but talk about you. Um, and you put off like a vibe, like people know you're powerful. Um, and I think people learn from you. We have guardian angel count on my protection. Yeah. I feel like you are highly protected. I also feel like you are very protective of the people in your life. Like people count on you and people can count on you. You're very protective of your own energy as well. We have rest. Come and hear my lullaby. I think there's something very soothing about your energy. I'm also getting with these two cards together, I'm getting siren energy. Okay. So you may, you may resonate with siren energy. People can't help but talk about a siren y'all. Um, it's just a deeply seductive energy. Um, and you ooze it. <laughs> You ooze it. Some of you guys ooze it and you don't even know. And if you do know, you command it. Okay. It, it's something that you choose to turn on and turn off at will kind of thing. I'm going to get one more of these cards. Tell me more. Okay. We have ghosts from another world. You feel otherworldly to people. You may be a someone who is a channeler or you are a spirit medium, but people feel you may be someone who has a lot of paranormal activity that happens around you. People talk about this. They talk about how you're connected. They talk about how they get like paranormal vibes from you, how you seem otherworldly, how, you know, you don't seem from here. You may have fae energy or align with the fairies or um, what are the Irish... I can't say it. It starts with a T, but I don't want to make a fool of myself trying to say it. But you may align with like the Fae of Ireland and they have a name. Um, but there, there's just this energy about you that you're very magical. You have a very otherworldly vibe, but it's, it's deep. It's like occultic. It's witchy. It's magical. It is, it has an edge to it. It has a question mark with it. Um, it's a little dangerous. It's a little bit like, it's not, it's not Hogwarts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not Hogwarts. It's like real magic. The thing is, is that you are the magic. And I think people pick up on that. Like you are the essence of magic. And I feel like your appearance kind of gives that vibe to a degree. I think it's in your eyes. I think when people hug you or touch you, they kind of feel this. There's a presence about you. And I think when people talk about you, people who don't know you and gossip about you, when they say horrible things about you, um, they usually find out that that's not the path to go because I feel like you're very protected by your guardians, your guides, your ancestors, whatever you work with. You're very, very protected. And it usually comes back on them somehow. The people who know you are very careful about what they say because they know that if, it, if, if you find out, uh, <laughs> 
Uh, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. Tell me more about my group three. Tell me more about why people talk about my group three. I think you trigger people. I think you absolutely trigger people. Uh, I think people are triggered by your perspectives, your points of view. For some of you, it's your religion, um, your rebellious um, points of view, your outside the box points of view. Some of you guys create art or rituals or your job. Um, how well you take care of yourself. All these things make people triggered um, because it's almost like there's this energy of how dare you? How dare you think you're, you're that good? Or how, how dare you take that good a care of yourself? Who do you think you are? You're so selfish. Well, you know what? Fuck you. You know, everyone should take good care of themselves. That's probably what's wrong with a lot of the world is that we're so focused on, you know, giving uh, of ourselves until we're empty. And then people expecting more. And we don't take time to take care of ourselves. The truth is, if you don't take care of yourself, you cannot take care of other people. That's factual. That's a factual fact. Okay? And so the people who judge you because you take time for yourself, they don't have that knowledge. They are not aware of just how important it is. Um, and I think you know. But you're triggered. I feel like for some of you, there are people who talk about how you raise your kids. Um... There are people who talk about your job. Some of you guys have jobs that aren't like the norm. I hate that fucking label. But they're not like, you know, what, what Aunt Betty does at the doctor's office. You know, it, it's outside the norm. Um, and I feel like some of you have people in your life because you, you don't want to work in the office. You know, you want to work from home. And they're like, oh, you're lazy. Fuck those, fuck those people. Fuck them. There's a lot of jobs that can be worked from home, and they should be. It saves our environment, and it saves people, energy, and money. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if, if that's your goal to work from home, do that. Let people judge you. Fuck those people. They don't, they don't know. Three of Cups. Ooh, I think people love talking about you because they love you. They like you. They like your energy. I feel like there's a lot of also positive talk about you. Um... Because you're powerful. I think you've helped people. I think people feel really good after they talk about, not talk about you, but talk with you or um, engage with you. I think the people you have in your life are really good people. They care about you. Um, and they speak highly of you. The people who don't know you well, a lot of times I feel like they're so enchanted by your energy that they'll talk about you. Like, oh my gosh, did you see them? They were just, oh, they were looking so good. What are they doing? Like they're trying to figure out what you're doing. How are you doing? How are you looking the way you are? How are you being the way you are? How have you survived? How have you gotten to the place you are? This flame here is the answer. We have the five of pentacles. Yeah, how have you risen out of this? This five of pentacles. Because I feel like a lot of you have felt like the outsider probably most of your life because of your gifts and abilities. And somehow you've managed to pull yourself up out of this. I feel like an outsider. I feel alone. I feel lost. I feel confused. How am I ever going to, you know, rise above it? How am I ever going to be accepted? To now you're like, I don't want to be accepted. I'm, I'm for the people who are for me and I'm good with that. It's like, how did you do that? How did you, how did you find your people? How did you get to this place of being happy and acceptance of yourself? How did you become so beautiful? The truth is you've always been beautiful. Okay. Um, you've always been attractive. You've always been this beautiful, mysterious, wonderful, magical person, but not everyone could see it because you were, you were in this energy of like, I don't fit in. I don't belong. I, I don't know why I'm here. Like, I feel like I, some of you guys may feel like you were born at the wrong time, um, in the wrong place, wrong body wrong realm even and that can be really hard to overcome but i feel like that's part of your quest here and people talk about your journey i think the people who talk about you positively they talk about your journey and on this journey what you found is the beauty of you through your darkness through your shadow through ownership of the truth of you and that shadow can be very dark you have to be willing to be triggered by your own darkness, the own, your own truth, the acceptance of self, whatever it is. 
you know, um, it can be very difficult. We have the Queen of Swords here. I feel like you're highly intelligent. There's an emotional intelligence with group three, highly intelligent. Um, and I feel like you really know how to speak to people. I feel like you really know how to come from a heart centered place. You may be a counselor or you may be like in some kind of job where you help uplift people, healer, um, in law or something like that, or you may talk for a living in some kind of way, use your voice. We have the Empress. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful Cancer energy. Healer, nurturer, queen of your kingdom. Okay. Of course, people talk about the Empress. Some are jealous. Some judge you for daring to be the Empress and others are impressed with how far you've come and they see where you're going and they, they never thought you could do it. And, and others are, you know, they want to know the impress. They want to know how you did this. Um, there's an air here for some people that you are intimidating. You're very protected. You are extremely powerful. Um, and people are always going to talk about powerful people. They always are. Whether you are sitting on the throne of your kingdom now or you're just building it, it doesn't matter. Wherever you are in the stage of your development, people probably have always talked about you because you've always kind of felt on the outside, right? You've always felt like you kind of didn't belong. And the truth is, is that I feel like there's been some kind of reflection about, I don't want to belong, <laughs> you know? Do I want to be like everybody else? No, I, I really don't because... Everyone else is going crazy over Stanley Cups, and that seems kind of weird, not judging people who love Stanley Cups. It's just an example, you know, um, and I care about, like, reading books and knowledge and self-growth and my shadow and what I can do in a bigger sense of the bigger picture and my art or my passion or my love or, you know, an or what I can do for animals or for children, because I feel like you have a big passion. I feel like you have a passion for something that's a big picture kind of thing. Um, and so when it comes to like people judging you or, or for not being like everyone else, I feel like a lot of you have like let that go. A lot of you with this flame here, you guys have phoenixing energy. Okay, you phoenix often, you're a professional phoenix. <laughs> you do it over and over and over. And that's what keeps your life interesting. And that's also why you trigger people because you change, you grow a lot. Um, and you're comfortable with that. You're comfortable with changing. I think a lot of you probably have Aquarian energy somewhere in your chart or you just vibe with it. You may have heavy Scorpio energy or Pluto energy, but also Uranus energy somewhere in your chart. That's very important uh, placement. But I feel like for some of you, part of your journey is this, I don't want to say constant growth, but this cycle of revealing of self, healing self, phoenixing, change. He revealing of self, healing self, phoenixing, change. Um, and there are different levels of it. Um, and I feel like some of you guys have reached the higher levels of this phoenixing, phoenixing experience and you're, you're now involved in helping others kind of accept themselves and grow. Um, and it really pisses people off because how dare you teach other people to grow? How dare you teach other people some of these hidden knowledge kind of things? How dare you empower people? Because you know, empowered people can be dangerous to those in the big house. You know what I'm saying? So there is people who talk about you um, as some, someone who's very powerful, who's a change maker, um, someone who empowers other people. There's a lot of positive talk about you, but there is a negative. And a lot of the negative comes from like judgment. Some people are intimidated by you. They feel your power. Some people are threatened by you. They feel like, I feel this energy now of like, this person's coming after me. And here, here's the kicker. I feel like there's not very many important people and people important enough for you to like cast on them or 
hex them or whatever. You're so protected and so at a different level than a lot of people that you don't have time for petty bullshit. Like you, that's petty to you. Like that's minor. You are in the big leagues, even though other people don't realize it. It's almost like in the spiritual world, like you're a a superstar in the spiritual world and people don't see it. They, they can't see it here yet. Um, and some of you guys are in deep undercover, if you will, from the spiritual world here. And you're here to kind of like help raise mass consciousness and because you're here to do that, you trigger people all the time. And you're just like, yeah, I trigger people all the time. It's to help them, you know, and I'm aware of that. And I'm okay with it now. I know my power. I, I know who I am. I have Empress energy. I'm here to help heal the planet, help heal, heal people. So of course, they're going to talk about me. They're going to talk trash on me. What you may not realize is people are talking positivity about you. I think there are people who wish you success. They wish you well. And I feel like there's gossip around you about they wish you would do more. They wish you would put out more. They wish you would put out more art or whatever it is you do. They wish you would do more of it because they want to support you. So, hey, that's great. Congratulations. You're doing something right. All right. Okay, group three, that's what I received for you. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'd love to have you as a member of my tribe. If you'd like to see more Auntie Amy's Trashy Tarot, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you beautiful, magical baddies on the other side. Bye guys.